and Binson Sarigo, KTM Prime. Events that characterized the third day of the siege on Westgate Mall, the biggest terror attack in Kenya since the 1998 bombing of the U.S. Embassy here in Nairobi. And of course, you're watching the continued coverage of that siege. Let me bring in John Ananamu. He's been keeping an eye uh, for us on what's happening at the West Mall um, in Westlands. Namu, if you can hear me, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, today we had a press briefing from Interior Cabinet Secretary Joseph Onlenko and Chief of Defense Forces, that is General Julius uh, Karange, and both of them are giving an assurance to Kenyans uh, on, uh, the, the, on the progress that they're making, really, and trying to assure Kenyans that this is a safe country. We're doing everything we can to ensure the hostages are safe. What is the latest from your end? Well, the latest, really, uh, Linda, uh, is that there really has been no movement towards the later um, hours of uh, this day, later hours of this afternoon, going on towards the hours of the evening. However, this evening, the fire that was begun shortly after 2 p.m., the one that has been spoken about in uh, Dennis Onsarigo's piece, as well as Edith Kimani's, the one that was uh, resulted uh, in uh, lots of gunfire as well as a number of explosions raged on until the uh, early hours of this evening. Huge plumes of smoke could have been seen um, just as dusk fell as well as when night fell. Um, the hue around here, around the night sky, changed to a tint of about orange. But we have been told and we can see now from a vantage point on the other side, on the eastern side of the Westgate Mall, that that fire has been contained. It has been reduced to something much smaller now. That's um, as much uh, action as took place this evening as regards the fight that, that has gone on um, so far in the Westgate Mall. Have been no gunshots fired so far here uh, this evening. Uh, the press continues to keep vigil as well as uh, members of the Kenya uh, Defense Forces and other security agencies who are involved or locked in this firefight against the terrorists. Linda. Now, there is a list that the Inspector General had said we're not paying any attention to, but I understand today there was an arrest that was made. That connects uh, the, 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 the attackers really to that particular list. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at the possibility that the Al Shabaab actually had given credible information as regards the people who are on that list, the people who are supposedly terrorists who have been fighting here. That person was arrested at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport in the early hours of this morning. And according to Interior Cabinet Secretary James Olelenk, who I spoke to a short while ago, confirming that he shares the name Guled with another person who was supposedly on that list, that confirmation is still being made as to whether those two people are indeed the same person. But if it is indeed the same person, this is a person who has been on the radar of uh, Kenyan security agents as well as regional and international security agencies for that matter as regards terrorism in the region. If he has been arrested and is indeed the person whom Kenyan security agencies believe him to be, then that will be a huge find and a huge boost to the fight against terror in, this, in respect to the Westgate attack as well as regional terrorism going forward. That today was perhaps the biggest turnaround and giving the Kenya Defense Forces as well as the security agencies here the ascendancy in this fight to, um, to, to remove the people who are in this, uh, in this mall, the, the terrorists who are currently still in this mall, Linda. Now, you have experience in covering stories in conflict zones. You have been to Somalia, and of course we know that Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack that you are currently witnessing at the West Gate Mall. But then, in essence, Nam, when you look at this attack, it looks like the Al-Shabaab, which has largely been termed as a and militia, is changing its start, isn't it? Well, that is very true, Melinda. In fact, this, this uh, attack is a very meaningful development, not just for regional terrorism, but for global terrorism. There are a lot of threads that can be run between the Westgate attack and other attacks that have taken place throughout the world. But just to mention what's been going on regionally in terms of the fight against terror, the attack here, the amount of focus, the amount of effort that has been put into this attack by the terrorists that, that, uh, that laid siege to the Westgate Mall on Saturday is indicative of a number of things. First of all, that 
these terrorists are now seeking out softer targets outside of the theater of conflict, which is Somalia, meaning that the Amisom troops, and we have spoken to, uh, to the deputy commander of the Amisom forces, uh, uh, Major General Simon Karanja, while we were in Somalia back in July, as well as a number of other agents and security analysts who can confirm this, that theater is firmly in, in control of Amisom, at least southern, the southern sector of Somalia meaning that their supplies have been choked, the, the means to fight and the will to fight there has also been reduced because the, the, the will of the people behind Al-Shabaab originally has now shifted. That, that will has now shifted in favor of Amazon. And what that would mean is that the Al-Shabaab, in order to keep relevant and to stay relevant within this global uh, and, regional fight, uh, and regional terrorism campaign, would pick out softer targets, targets that have uh, perhaps a more wider effect in terms of viewership and a wider effect in terms of the number of people that they are able to affect. Now, having said that, that the Al-Shabaab's influence in Somalia has been reduced, again, this terror attack points to a very, very strong thread that is being connected throughout terrorist organizations across the world. Um, General, General Julius Karangi's statement today that this is indeed um, global terrorism is very true. Um, given, given the fact that um, this, is a, some, this is something that has been seen in Mumbai, it's been seen in Algeria earlier on this year, um, it's been seen in Russia and in other places where terrorists who are committed to seeing the, the, the terrorist aims to the very end, and by the very end meaning the end of their lives, would take siege, to, would lay siege to a place that has a lot of members of the public, softer targets, and use bullets rather than, rather than the, the, the traditional weapons that they have used. Um, in, in order to perpetrate their attacks. Saying uh, um, the, bullets, the use of bullets and the use of gunfire and the use of that, that kind of weaponry in terrorist attacks um, by the Al-Shabaab is a new development. Usually the Al-Shabaab would prefer to distance themselves from the impact of the, of the attacks that, uh, that they would wish to perpetrate, as witnessed throughout the, the two years that we have been involved in Somalia. Grenades have been thrown, gunshots have been fired, but from a distance. No such commitment to the level that these people would so brazenly enter a shopping mall, stay there, and stay the course has been seen. So this really is a very new and very interesting development, and that is probably why so many regional and international security agencies are here watching for the end of this conflict and to see how this conflict develops, Linda. Of course, now we have lots of people watching this uh, from the international scene as well. And you have tried to describe in your own way, looking at the experience that you've had reporting from conflict zone. But why do you think the Al Shabaab are now changing the attack in how they carry out the operations, they carry out the attacks? This is the first time in this country that you're seeing a hostage situation, really. All right, like I mentioned, part of the reason reason why they're changing tact is because of how, how small their influence has become in Somalia. In that theater of conflict, their, their, their influence really has been decimated by Amisom forces since their entry in 2007. They, their supplies have been choked down in Kismayo as well as in Mogadishu. Their, 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 their access to arms have also been cut off by the army there. And the will of the people has shifted from, from um, the Al-Shabaab that, that, that uh, they originally supported to Amazon forces. But an, another thing that perhaps is very indicative of a dangerous trend in this region as well as globally is a global element, the global element of terrorism. Terrorism now no longer just belongs to a small select group of terrorist organizations like the Al-Qaeda or in the Arabian Peninsula or the Al-Shabaab. People with various grouses, various, um, various issues that they have um, would, would lean more towards terrorist ideologies and, and buy into the sort of franchised terror networks that, that, that exist throughout the region. Um, a, a good example of this is a number of foreign fighters that have been involved in, in, uh, in, in terrorist attacks in the region, like uh, General Julius Karangi said, especially with regard to the Westgate attack, and in previous atta attacks in the past. I mean, the Adebolajo case in the United Kingdom, a person who actually transited through Kenya is one example, as well as the, n the numerous people who have been spotted in Somalia from Afghanistan, from Iraq, from other theaters of conflict, trying to lend their experience to fighters in this region. That's something quite dangerous. 
um, you've seen, as, and KTN has been able to do this in past reports, showing that the, the fight against the, 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 the fight for terrorists, rather the fight for the soul of terrorism, from that point of view, is no longer just the select fight, especially for the Al Shabaab of the Somali people or people of Somali or origin. This shows that the ideology, the terrorist ideology, is one that's being sold um, very heavily and very and, and, and very aggressively by various um, terror networks. And that is something to watch for. That is something that will keep a lot of people up at night in terms of making sense of this attack and fighting terrorism in future. Linda. Now, what does that all say about the capacity or maybe the uh how the uh, Al-Shabaab group are able to do all these uh, attacks or in, indeed expand regionally if that is what they're happening. Uh, they are doing if uh, what the reports we are getting because we've also had uh, reports that uh, some of those attackers in Kenya today are um, from different nationalities, for some from the United States, although the FBI are saying that they are yet uh, to confirm if there are any uh, American nationals in this. What does that say about the capacity of the Al-Shabaab to uh, pull out such kind of uh, attacks? Well, it says something not just about the Al-Shabaab, but about other um, terrorist organizations, that the terrorist ideology is no longer the preserve of the Al-Shabaab or of Al-Qaeda. It really is now because um, of, of the proliferation of, of, of information on the Internet and various other streams of uh, information where people can go and get that information out of. It shows that people are now buying into this terrorist uh, um, ideology in order to sort out, the, sort out their own grievances um, with whoever they feel um, they are aggrieved by. Um, the, the influence or rather the entrance of people from the United States of America, the entrance of people from the United Kingdom, Samantha Lethwit, a person whose name has been bandied about in the past couple of days, the, the, and, and other such names sort of indicates that that, that franchising of, of terrorist ideology is no longer the preserve of, um, of the Al-Shabaab or Al-Qaeda, but these are now vehicles rather. These are vehicles through which that terrorist ideology and those grouses and those grievances can be expressed. That is, is, that is, that is something that you can see in the, the rhetoric that has been perpetrated, the, the rhetoric that has been put forward by a number of the people who are from foreign, uh, who are foreign nationals fighting in this war, as well as uh, Kenyan nationals who went across to Somalia to fight in this war. But something um, about this region, about this region that. Um, perhaps made it easier for uh, the terrorists to enter Kenya and to be able to perpetrate this is the proliferation of small uh, of arms and light weapons. In 2010, the Kenya National Focal Point on Small Arms uh, released a report. Coincidentally, at the time it was headed by the, the current, current Inspector General, David Kemayo, released a report in which it said that there are between 530,000 and 680,000 illegal weapons currently in the country, meaning that access to the kind of weapons, semi-automatic light weapons, grenades even, is much easier than was previously thought. The porosity of our borders, as well as corruption of security agencies along that border, because we need to be frank, that that, that, that has been a very serious challenge for um, our security agencies. The porosity and the corruption along those borders has allowed these arms to be able to enter into different parts of this country and therefore be, uh, the, the access that uh, people with a terrorist agenda would be much easier for them. Now, I'm going to have to stop you there, but stay with me, stay with me, because there is uh, an aspect that I want you to still bring out about the Al-Shabaab and its capacity related to the question that you've just been asked, of course, by Ben Kitele, because the information that we've got today is that some of those attackers are from the U.S., from the U.K., from Finland, uh, and, and really, if this Al-Shabaab is from Somalia, then what capacity really do they have to carry out these attacks in the region, in Somalia, if they have to depend on, on the people from all over the world. We are getting back to you in just a few minutes. But right now, let's look at the implications of such attacks in Kenya. How prepared are we as a country to handle this? And what essentially changes in a country when we see such attacks like this? Catherine Mwando takes a look at this. Curious onlookers disregard their personal safety in the name of getting first-hand information of what's going on at the Westgate shopping mall. Even 300 meters away, they're still exposed to a myriad of dangers. 
The heavy assault taking place inside the mall left police officers no choice but to take action. <laughs> In such a situation, the public is advised to stay as far away from ground zero as possible. Don't have words. Don't have words. What do you think of? 